Life Haven is an establishment Prophet Emmanuel and Prophetess Ruth Makandiwa founded for the benefit of God's people. This sanctuary of revival is a hub of unforgettable supernatural encounters. A place where renewal, transformation and restoration takes place. Most of the life having guests are meeting the prophets of God for the first time in their lives. According to their testimonials, what makes this encounter so powerful is hearing God speaking into their lives for the first time. At my, like, I grew up in a camp when I was young, about a grade seven, around that age. So I always dream at our house, the house we used to live in. And I always dream I, it will be at night, and then it's as if war just starts. And then I'll be, I'll be telling my, my siblings and some people around me that we should walk through this way. The first time I had the dream, it was as if I'm just leading them through the wilderness. We'll be jumping fences, going into the forest, and then we reach a place where, there's, where, they, where there are toilets. And as I continue having the dreams with time, I used to just have the dreams. It's, it's as if I'll be knowing where I'll be going, and I'll be saying, ah, but this one's happened. I know the way. And then I'll be just taking them. And then we end up at the toilets. We meet some soldiers. We meet some people. And then I, it, it happens again continuously like that. So I'll be just wondering, the, the issue that really bothers me is this toilet. Why do we always pass by toilets? It's, sometimes they'll be in buildings. Sometimes they'll be just outside with, without no structure. It's just, it's just a mess, my sister. It's just mess. Look at all the girls in your family. Marriage is an issue. Yes, Papa. And the war always starts at your place, at your village, where your people were groomed and you were brought up, which means there was something wrong in the way that you were brought up. God is simply showing you where your battles are starting from. And you being on the forefront, it means you need to lead your family, your entire generation out of this marital slavery. Okay. 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 Yes. So, see yourself back home and where you grew up, like in a camp and so on and so on. And then it starts from there, there is a war, and then you have to be running out, away and so on. Listen, this is simply what I'm seeing there. Your people are not allowed to settle in homes. When we talk of toilets, there is a mess. There could be a certain behavior that is on all of you that might cause people to Keep away, do everything, not to want to be close to you. You are people that are always avoided. You get to places, people avoid you, you get rejected. Yes, Papa. Whether you get a person today, whether that person is a friend, whether the person is even a girl, the relationship will not last. There will always be something on you people that people would want to avoid. <laughs> like mess, mess. Everything that you do will end up getting messed up. Whether it's education, it will get messed up. Yes, you Papa. can't complete it, you can't finish it. Yes, Papa, Professor I, Papa. Especially the area, the aspect of wars, fighting, 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 fighting every time. And the war has to start from the compound. No, it's the way your people were brought up. You really didn't see a good model of marriage. You didn't see a good model of marriage. What was given close to you to see as you were growing up wasn't anything to admire. It's true, Papa. Mm. So that's where your battle is coming from. How you were brought up in that place and so on. You are that kind of a person that you didn't really learn much about marriage from your parents. It's true, Papa. There's not much to admire there. So that's where your battle is coming from. But I'll pray for you. And then 
we'll see how God is going to actually settle all these fights and all these disputes. How old are you, my sister? I'm 30, 31. Okay, are you married? Just in, no, I'm not. Hmm. We have got a prophet in the house. But I don't know. You need to pray because there could have already been two people interested in your life. But the problem is when they come close, they see something that they don't like. You're a likable person from a distance. But when a person comes close, they discover something and they want to avoid you. So we need to get rid of that spirit. Toilet, it is not a good thing on your part. If somebody else comes up and then he talks about toilet, I'll give a different interpretation. The dream has to be according to that person. It's not universal. Thank you, Prophet. Okay. Thank you, Papa. It's, it's, it's not universal. And you also need to pray against period pain. Yes, yes, Prophet. Period pain. Yes, Papa. You see, it's because there is dirty in your stomach that has to be flushed out. It's true, Papa. Which, which might cause some formation of some, some kind in your stomach, which might then require an operation. It's true. It's true, men of God. It's so, true. so it's just maybe you are seeing a toilet outside and yet God is just talking about uh, cleaning you up. So I will pray for you and then we will see what comes out. Something will come out of your body. So that's it. We have covered your health. We have covered your marital life. We can put our hands together for Jesus. Thank you, men of God. Yeah, I always have dreams of figures. I am ever being given figures when I'm sleeping. At times I wake up in the night and I write those numbers down. So I don't know whether they are telephone numbers or some of them, they are even more than seven figures or so. And also dates, I'm given dates, the dates which are ahead of, what I, of where I will be. So I don't know what to do with the dates. Most of the times, I, when I look at the dates which, which I'm given, I normally fast to say maybe there's something which is going to happen on that date. So I take it as a first date to say something maybe bad is going to happen to me. So I fast against that date. So I really don't know what these dates mean and the figures which I'm given at night every time, really what they mean. At one time, I was given uh, names of people who I even don't know. So I don't know what to do with them. And uh, recently, I've just been given... I was given, on Thursday, I was given, uh, when I was just about to wake up, they said, remember, 13 years ago, remember 13 years ago. So when I scrolled back to say 13 years ago, that was 2003, but there are a lot of things which happened there, so I don't know what to do with it, the 13 years ago. That one is a, is a very strange, <coughs> I wouldn't say dream, they are dreams, but it would make more sense if you had done anything to do with the numbers at school. Then it was going to make more sense. But if there was nothing like that, then, um, then um, it carries a different meaning. She was supposed to have done accounts seriously. Maybe that was going to be her line. But now hearing it at this point, trying to go back to that, let's have an alternative. But man of God, she's just confirming that she once worked at an organization where she was dealing with wages, which are numbers. Okay. Where's your husband? He's at home. He's at home? Yes. Was there a day when you saw a number which appeared like to be like a phone number, but... It was clear during the dream, but when you woke up, it wasn't clear, but it was as if, if you call the number, somebody was going to pick the phone, was going to answer, and it was going to be like a woman. 
Yes, yes, it's true, man of God. Okay. But when I woke up, I couldn't remember. You couldn't remember, but in the dream, that's what I'm saying. In the dream, you saw the number, and you knew that when I wake up and I call this number, a woman is going to. It was as if you had seen the number on your husband's phone. But, okay, we'll talk about numbers, okay? We'll talk about numbers because they have to line up. I know there can be such grace where somebody's given dates when things are going to happen. Especially if we begin to pray for it. You will have a date this time around. If there, is, if there are no demons actually afflicting you, we pray for you. And then after praying for you, you will see numbers again, dates, but with the exact event. Thank you, man of okay. God. Thank you. Because God. all this, honestly, all this is just a clue. It's just a clue that God wants to talk to her. But she wasn't really paying attention to what is happening. But it's a clue that God wants to talk to you and give you detailed events it's with true. dates. So it can be a clue for seven years still happening and happening until you understand that mm -mm, God is trying to talk to me here. So how do, I, do, how do I work on this? And you begin to pray along that line. I've seen it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now you're giving me dates, uh, days, numbers. That's what I'm seeing. You want to use me in that area. So what is attached to the number? What is attached to the number? What is attached to the number? And then you'll be able to see the date and you'll be able to see the wedding taking place. So you will know that, ah, this is the thing that has been my desire. Now I know on this particular time, this thing is going to happen. So I think you just need prayer. As for you, it's just a dream, but it's a clue. The Holy Spirit is trying to awaken your spirit to make you know that he wants to communicate with you concerning information and their specific dates. But all that you need is just prayer because dates alone cannot really mean anything. Even myself, I wouldn't want to go to bed and I'm seeing dates. What is happening there? No, 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 no. So go further. Just like Samuel, 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 he woke up. God didn't say anything. He went to his mentor. Ah, went back again. Samuel, Samuel, woke up, went to his mentor. And then he said, this time when he calls you, this is how you answer. And then he was given how to expand from just Samuel, Samuel, numbers, numbers. And then you move on into information. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So I will pray for you. You will see next time when you go to bed and you see 13. Because of all the numbers that normally appear, 13 is the most dominating number. It's true, men of God. Yeah. Like I've already said, go back to 13. I, I don't know. But you will notice this time you will see number 13 and you will refuse to wake up. You will say, what is it with, it, with this number? And they will give you information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Papa, for this opportunity. I had a dream several times when I was locked in a house and I could not find where I put the keys to unlock myself out. Can I see your finger? This one. <laughs> All right. That's okay. It is very simple. You said you were logged. Yes, Papa. In the house. Yes. But what made you feel like you lost the keys? What, was, what made you feel like you lost the keys? Because it was somebody who locked you in the house, right? Was it you locking yourself in the house and then you lost the keys or what? What was the feeling like? I know you might not remember most of it, but I'm talking about the feeling. Listen to me. The very important part when you're having a dream, when you wake up, it's not just the dream that you had. It is the immediate feeling. When you wake up, do you feel danger? Most of the dreams, they, they are so heavy and so real while you are dreaming. But when you wake up, you see, ha, it's not as serious as I was feeling it. The feeling that immediately follows, it tells you whether it is an authentic dream, it is an important dream, or it's not an important dream.
the feeling, even if you see yourself dying and then you wake up, you don't feel like it's real. The feeling is what actually the first interpretation to the dream. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Yes. So feelings are very important. I would want you every time when you get a dream, you wake up, memorize your feeling. Immediately when you thought of the dream, how did you feel? Did you feel safe? Did you feel like it's never going to happen? Did you feel like it was just a dream? Did you feel like, mm, this thing is so real? Like the way I felt it, I'm still feeling it, even after waking up. So I want you to refresh your mind again. You are in a room, locked, and then who, who owns the keys? Your feeling there. I felt like they were my keys, and I was worried where I put them. I can't really remember. You can help me, man of God. That's all right. If you had a feeling like the keys were yours, but then you were logged in, but you couldn't find your keys, your keys, and you have a feeling like these are my keys, my sister, this is your decision that has logged you in your situation. Help it me, is of God. your decision. But no one can bring you out of that situation. It is you. You are trapped in a career that is not yours. Help me, Papa. Yes, you are trapped in a career that is not yours. So who is going to bring you out of that place? You had a feeling that the keys are mine. So if there was any person who actually locked the door using your keys and you feel like, I can't find my keys, which means somehow God has given you the power to unlock yourself and bring yourself out of that situation which you willingly walked into by the decision, the choices that you have made. There could be many, but there is one outstanding choice that you have made, that if you were to go back into the past, you were never going to make that mistake again. Am I talking to you? Yes, Baba. Help me. <laughs> okay, I'll come to you. I'm not getting it, Baba. Can you please help me? What are you not getting? What tells you that you have to get something? What, what is that something that you feel like? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying here. I want to keep it as a dream. So it helps you tomorrow so that when you get a dream, you pray about it. God will give you the interpretation. Okay. Okay, let me ask you a question. Very open. These are things that are not far away from any person actually here. Do you feel like your life is moving? No, I'm stuck. Don't you feel like you are stuck? Yes, I'm stuck, man Is that of not God. being locked in, a, in one situation? Yes, I'm locked in. But I'm saying it's, it's because of a decision. So I know you might want me to talk about fruitfulness. You might want me to get into fruitfulness. Yes, Baba. Yes. But before we get to that, let's talk about your career. You have got so much potential but no cash, no money. Nothing is happening to you. That's true, man of God. But you see, every place you've been where you ended being accused, wrongly accused, it was your willingness to walk into that situation. Watch your decisions. Simple. My sister, watch your decisions, choices. Every moment you make a choice, pray before you make a choice. I said you have a lot of choices, wrong choices, but there's one which is devastating, outstanding. That if you were to go back, you were never going to make the same choice that you have made. That's very true, man of God. So it's all right. I'm calm. I don't want to get into a lot of things, but I'm saying watch it next time when you are making decisions because that's your key to freedom. 
And if you continue praying, in fact, your dream, it wasn't three times like that one. It was like two times. But the second time, it's not as if you didn't get the keys. There was a bunch of keys, but you couldn't find the actual key. There was a bunch of keys, but you could not find the actual key that could actually fix. Because there was, some, at some point, there was like a wooden cabinet, dark, 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 dark brown, but on, on top of the wooden cabinet, there was a key, but you couldn't reach out for the keys before you wake up. Yes, it's true, man of God. But listen to this. Even if you were going to get that bunch of keys, you were never going to find the key. But the feeling, that's what I like. Feeling like you have the keys are yours. It means your, your, your breakthrough is determined by you. You decide when you want to come out. And you, even you're coming to the life heaven. You're coming to the life heaven. Yes, Baba. It's one of those choices, one of those decisions to free yourself from your environment, from your situation. You are a serious prophet. I don't know for how long you have been married, but you are struggling. Yes, I've been married for 21 years. 21 years? Yes, and I'm really struggling. Your struggling is different from some other people's struggling. <laughs> I've gone through a lot, man of God. I'll tell you the lot that you have gone through. So just hold on. Okay. I told him that I had this dream whereby I was seeing myself locked in a room and I was looking for my keys and I could not lock myself out of the room. I wanted interpretation of this dream. And Prophet Emmanuel Makantiwa explained to me that um, it meant I struggled in decision making um, and I reflected from the time I got married. Um, I looked at myself the way I got into marriage. It was not really like I was ready for it. Um, the man of God usually teaches the youth that um, when you are dating, you are not supposed to visit your boyfriend to his house. And that's the, uh, the, the, the mistake that I made when I was young, when I was dating. I visited my boyfriend, who is now my husband, and I was not ready for marriage. Um, the fact that I visited him, that logged me in before I had made um, the rightful decision. He even um, told me some of the dreams that I had forgotten about the keys. Um, he explained to me how I had this dream where I saw the keys on a, on a wooden, it was like a wooden table or cupboard like, and there were some keys there. And I woke up before I managed to take the, the keys. It was a bunch of keys. And I woke up before I could take the keys. So the man of God just said, um, it's all about decision making in your life. Life Heaven is surely a place for a life-changing experience. <laughs>